This is fascinating that the Lord created the planet for man to be in charge of. The Bible says that the heavens were made for God, but he made the earth for man. This is a huge subject, much larger than what we have time for, but I want you to picture this. The Lord took this planet called planet Earth, and he created a little garden in that planet. It was We don't know the size, but it was large enough for two completely yielded people to God to manage well. He had given them a responsibility to take charge of something. They were not responsible for the earth. They were responsible for what was in the garden. And they were commanded by the Lord to be fruitful. In other words, be productive with your life. Make sure that you are, uh, you are creative, that you, are, uh, you use uh, ingenuity and integrity and excellence in your work and do things, be productive, all right? So be fruitful, multiply, have kids who have kids who have kids who have kids and subdue the earth. So in other words, use, use the generations to expand the boundaries of the garden until the entire earth is covered with a garden that is under the rule of man that is ruled by God. There's never been a question from day one. God can rule everything himself. That's not what he wants. He can, he can force sin out of the world. He can force you know, everything to work perfectly. But what he wanted was people who had a choice to be in partnership by choice. The devil had been booted out of heaven because he wanted to be worshipped. He considered himself to be equal with God. And so he was booted out of heaven. A third of the angels were booted with him. And so we have, for some reason, we have the devil on planet Earth. Revelation talks about a third of the stars were swept uh, under the enemy's control by the tail of the dragon. It's a really bizarre passage, but is it possible that a third of the planets were perhaps put under the enemies of control, uh, the enemy's control when he's kicked out of heaven and the devil himself landed on planet Earth? All we know for certain is that the devil was here. And the Lord picked this place where the devil landed to put you and me. Because defeating the devil has never been a challenge for God. With a breath, he can be destroyed forever. That's never been the issue. What he wanted was for humanity that was created in his image to bring defeat to the devil. See, the devil wanted to be worshipped, so he created those made in his image who would worship by choice to be the ones that would defeat the powers of darkness. And so he empowered man to do that. But you know the tragedy is sin entered the garden. Sin entered their life by partaking of the forbidden fruit. So what happened instantly, in fact the Bible says that Jesus was crucified before the foundations of the world. So the Lord in his predetermined plan already prepared for a savior to come and redeem humanity that would have booted their chance to be the ones to defeat the powers of darkness. And so a process was set in order for Jesus to come and to destroy the powers of darkness. But this is what he did. He came as a man and he came to suffer in our place and to receive on himself what we deserved so that we would be qualified to receive what he deserved. So picture this. He's crucified and when he's crucified, it says he goes into the lower parts of the earth and he releases those who had been bound by death I mean, you know, before the shedding of blood, there was no forgiveness of sin. So no one can go to heaven in the Old Testament. So instead they were put in this place, uh, Abraham's bosom it's called, a place of comfort, but the blood hasn't been shed yet, so they cannot go before the Father. They cannot actually go to heaven. They're not qualified. They are still sinners found guilty. But because they had lived with a measure of faith and responsibility before God, God allowed them to go to this place of comfort versus another place called a place of torment. When Jesus died, he went in and made the proclamation, the bill has been paid. You are free. You are clean. You are without sin. And the Bible says he led a host, a captive, a host of captives. And he sent it. And on his way to the Father, he sees Mary weeping in the garden. And he stops and he talked to her for a moment. And this is in Matthew, I think it's 27, where you see there's a record of some of the saints walking around, you know, the, the old saints checking out the sites in Jerusalem, 
you know, while Jesus, uh, Jesus is talking with Mary, these, the, the graves open and these, these Old Testament believers were actually seen visiting various places and people around Jerusalem. It's a weird story. And then Mary goes to grab Jesus, and Jesus says, wait, don't touch me. I've not ascended to the Father yet. So somehow he gets all the saints back together, back on the bus, and he takes them up before the Father, and he makes the presentation to the Father of those he has redeemed. He comes back to his disciples, and he makes this proclamation. He says, all authority has been given to me, therefore go. And what he's basically saying is, I got the keys back, that Adam and Eve gave away. What were they? Keys of authority to govern a planet. So Jesus now, defeating the devil, defeating death, comes back and he announces to his disciples, all authority has been given to me. In other words, I got the keys back of authority over the planet. And now here, I'm giving them back to you. Let's get back to plan A. Plan A is obviously the saving of souls, but it's also the restoration of a planet. It's the restoration of cities, of nations, under the sovereign, grace-filled rule of God through his chosen people. It's a beautiful thing that the Lord has done, but since the original plan that we find here in Genesis 1, since this original assignment, be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, since the original plan, sin has entered the earth. Because sin has entered, sickness has entered, death has entered, torment has entered. All these other elements have entered the world. So now, to restore everything, we go as people commissioned by the Lord to bring deliverance, to bring healing, to confront powers of darkness every place where the enemy has stolen, and killed and brought destruction. It is our privilege and assignment to represent Jesus, to reverse the effects of that. So when Jesus announced, all authority has been given to me, he's announcing, listen, that little devil out there has no authority. I have it all now. I have it all. How did the devil get authority? Do you remember the scripture says, we are slaves of the one we obey? Paul dealt with this in Romans. We are slaves of the one we obey. A slave, a slave basically has no possessions. Everything that belongs to a slave becomes a part of the slave owner's possessions once they become a slave. So when Adam and Eve sinned, their keys of authority over a planet, the enemy took, said thank you very much, he took those, those keys and he used them against man. In Luke 4, look at this interesting passage. In Luke 4, we have this dialogue between Jesus and, um, and the devil. Uh, this is during the temptation of Jesus, during his 40-day fast. And he makes this statement um, to the devil. He says, verse 5, Luke 4, verse 5, the devil taking him up on a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, which is interesting because you can't see all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. So somehow there was a spiritual experience involved. There was something that took place. The devil showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And this is what the devil said. The devil said to him, all authority, all this authority, I will give you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me and I can give it to whoever I wish. Okay, are you thinking? He shows them all the kingdoms of the world. Well, who owns the earth? God does. But who did he give it to? Man. Delegated authority. Who did man give it to? Through obedience to the devil, the devil took the keys. And so Jesus is now with the devil. And the devil says, see, these are all the kingdoms of the world. They've been given to me. I can give them to whoever I want. If you bow down and worship me, you can have the keys. In other words, if you give me what I want, I'll give you what you came for. Do you see it? What did the enemy want from day one? He wanted to be worshipped. So he knew the purpose of Jesus was to come and to take the keys of authority back. But Jesus refused to do it through military might. He refused to do it through compromise and a shortcut by appealing to the devil's own arrogance and personal desires. What he chose instead was to be crucified. 
And after he was crucified, he rose again. When he resurrected, he rose with keys because he got the keys back. Yeah.